Welcome back to the sewing machine repair guy. Today we have an Atlas sewing machine and this one was brought in because uh, it wouldn't go full speed. So the machine moves freely and uh, so the problem is probably with this pedal and the foot control and um, the person that brought it over said that uh, they tried to work on this a little bit so we're probably going to concentrate on this foot pedal but first I always want to clean the machine so that we have something clean to work with and as you can see on some of this video it's pretty dirty um, it's not the dirtiest machine I've seen but it's it's kind of dirty and um, it is free to rotate so it's not going to be a terrible machine inside but um, it definitely needs a clean so let's get to it all right so i just started taking this thing apart and uh well i think you can see what i'm looking at so here i just started taking this thing apart and this is what i find so you have bare wires right here going to the plug and this one goes up to the motor um, I don't think this person knew this and I'm pretty sure that this machine was being used quite a bit with these cables like this. We're lucky that this did not start a fire. So this is why uh, for these older vintage machines when I get them into my shop I don't run them right away without looking at them first and cleaning them and everything so that is scary that should scare anybody who's working on a machine or who buys a, a vintage machine you got to make sure you're looking at your cabling to make sure it's safe before you use that machine so this machine is definitely not safe to operate right now before we do some repairs to that cable Okay, so if you notice on this bobbin tire, there's a flat spot right there where this thing had been engaged and sitting on that rotor for a while. You also notice, so it's not cracking quite as bad as some of the ones I've seen. But what you might notice is the color on this is not white, but it actually was colored to match this machine. So that's kind of neat. machine's really not that dirty. Um, it's, there's a lot of surface dirtiness to it, but uh, when you take it apart, there's not a lot of rust, there's not a lot of dirt uh, inside the machine, so uh, this ought to make a pretty good machine.
this is isopropyl alcohol. It's a uh, 99% industrial grade. And uh, I just have it in a little spray bottle. So when you're doing your mechanical portions that move around, the crud cutter gets a lot of that grease off, but you have to be careful to get the crud cutter out of there. And I use that isopropyl alcohol to kind of rinse it out. And that way when I put the oil in there, it will stay. And uh, you also have to make sure that you oil this machine because you have just cleaned out all the oil that was on those mechanical portions. For the rest of the machine, the outside, I wipe off the crud cutter and then I'll put a thin, really, really thin coat of oil over the, the whole machine to protect it. And, uh, you know, just some way to make sure that that crud cutter doesn't stay on that paint because it will affect your paint if it stays on there too long. This part right here is what gets stuck on a lot of machines that have old oil in them. So what that part is, is this little dial over here that controls your feed dogs and how, you know, whether or not they're um, pulled down below for your darning setting or if they're set up high for your fabric, feeding the fabric. So this little part moves in and out when you operate this dial. This is the same mechanism on many, many machines. It just looks different in how they design the, the button up here or the switch. And so I always make sure to clean that really good, make sure it's moving really well. Uh, because when you have credit up oil in here that has turned, it turns into glue and this piece just will not move. So you want to make sure that piece moves just fine when you're working on some of these older machines. So one thing you can tell when you're looking at these old machines is it, if it was maintained. This machine was not oiled, um, but also this machine may not have been used much at all. Um, and it's actually funny because the machines that are not oiled are usually in better condition because um, everything moves because the oil hadn't turned gummy on you and aged and you know turned bad. So um, it's actually easier to clean a machine that no one had ever maintained, <laughs> believe it or not. And that's it for the cleaning on this machine, except for some of these parts that I haven't touched yet. Um, but I'm going to oil this so that the oil can seep in while I'm cleaning some of this other stuff. And we're also going to do some, we're also going to do something to this motor. So when you get to this point in a machine, um, I want to contact the person who owns the machine to see if they want me to do this because for one thing, the motor may not survive me pulling it apart and trying, attempting to reconnect wires to it. Um, for another thing, this cable costs money, so I'm going to be replacing the belt, the tire, and the cable to the motor for this machine. And that's a minimum. That's not even addressing the problem with, the potential problem with the pedal. So I'm going to contact the uh, owner of the machine and make sure that they want me to continue on with this. All right, we got the go ahead. We're gonna pull this motor apart and see if we can do this repair and see if we can bring this atlas back to life.
this washer right here, it's a wavy washer, so it's it's got a little curve to it. And that way it puts a little preload on this side, pushes this against this wall so that your um, rotor is seated where it should be. Uh, right now it's not because we've come up above the brushes there. Well, here's my cheat code. Uh, I buy these on Amazon. And what you end up getting is a nice molded plastic plug, which is very safe. It is not one of these that's riveted together that I don't know if those rivets are touching wires or not. Um, so I don't like these and it's all molded. So what we'll do is we'll take this, we'll measure it out. We'll give a little bit extra for good measure. extra for good measure. And we're almost ready to fix this thing. So soldering is a skill that anybody can learn. Um, I have found that it's better to buy nicer tools and have temperature control than to buy the cheap um, Radio Shack or am I dating myself but uh, you know, Walmart kind of soldering irons. Uh, I like to be able to control the temperature on here. And uh, please, please, before you try this, watch someone who actually knows how to solder, not me. So the first thing you wanna do here is it's called tinning. So you're putting some solder on these wires so that they will mate with the other ones inside. So those leads are tinned and then now I have these old leads so I'm going to turn up my temperature a little bit on my soldering iron and we're going to pull these old leads off. Sometimes in order to get it started melting, you got to, oh, no, nope, we got it, okay. Yep, that's hot. Okay. Also make sure you're in a well-ventilated space because solder contains lead. If you're using the good stuff. And if you have a good soldering iron, all you're gonna have to do is just touch these two together, apply a little heat, and they are now one. You hold it there a little bit, and then that's not coming out. Yeah. Now 
Now you want to make sure when you put it back together this is not going to touch the rotor or have any issues like that. So you see how these two screws are up there, so this is how this is going together. Okay, uh, before I put it together, I want to make sure that I have my wavy washer in there. I also want to make sure that we have a little drop of oil. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So we got the auto transformer and we're gonna turn that down to zero and we're gonna turn it on. It's not moving, that's good. Now we're gonna slowly turn this up and see if we get some movement. All right, we got some movement there on the motor. So it's working. It's smelling a little toasty. But it's not looking toasty. Right now we're doing kind of a run in. There we go. So we got the crud out of there between the brushes and the rotor. That's what we want to see. We're going fast. I can feel air flow through here. Had to get some of the cruddies out of there. But we're running. So we got our machine cleaned up. We got it oiled up. And now it's time to put it back together, get a little run in, um, and see how we're doing. Try this one. Oh yeah, much better.
something is not right in here. So we're gonna look in there next. All right. So now that we're looking inside here, I've unplugged it. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that when I push on that pedal, what's what's happening with this thing? You see that? See how it's just moving around in there? So that's one problem. There should be a screw holding it in, which is missing. Another problem is that spring doesn't look right. The only thing holding this in place was really the wires. It's not really where you want to be. Okay, someone has replaced... Um, all right, let's talk about how this works. These each are a resistor. So each of these spring looking things is a resistive element. And what that does is it, it uh, lowers the voltage at each one of these points. So as you press on your pedal, it's going to it's going to start off over here not touching anything, so that's off. And it's slowly going to come across and it's going to touch each one of these little rivets here. And as it touches each one, it's going to In this case, this first one it goes through 1 2 3 4 5 6 resistors. So this will be your lowest voltage and then it goes here. Now you're only going through 5 resistors. Now you're going through four, three, two, one, and then when it goes all the way over, <clears throat> it's not going through any resistors. And you have the most voltage going to that motor. Someone has replaced a spring with a spring. This is not a suitable replacement. This is not a resistor. This is a spring out of a kit that gives you a bunch of springs. Um, the problem with this is its height. So when this thing is in here, it's touching the bottom of this. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's very little clearance. That one spring is higher than all the others, all the other resistors. So that spring could touch this plate. And if you use this thing with your hands or with your feet, you're barefoot, you could get shocked and that's not safe because that is up above the rest. It's not recessed all the way down in this ceramic material. So now I don't have any replacement resistors, but I do have an old pedal. that we might be able to replace. One for one. You also notice that this one doesn't move around because it's got a screw right there.
All right, now we want to finish putting this machine together so we can move on to our next machine because we've got a lot of machines to work on. Yeah, so I like how that's going. Looking really well. Now you can fine adjust using this for your tension. Those are some pretty good stitches out of this machine. And we just gotta make sure that the light works. And we gotta make sure that we put a bobbin winder tire on there, and we'll be about done. So this machine, beautiful machine, it has a few blemishes here and there. A few little places where the paint is discolored. Uh, I just do a once over with a little, very light coat of oil, just to protect the the paint. Let's figure out which color would work best for my bobbin winder. So this was supposed to be a beige. It uh, it turns out it looks more like a cream color. Um, and this machine, I believe, used to be pink, and it has turned out to be more of a cream color. So that may actually work. See where the pink right there, the colors are a little bit off. kind of hard to tell. Uh, then you have white and so the old one is a cream color pink color it's very similar to this right here. You know a white would you could get away with doing a white on that as well. Um, clear or translucent kind of works with anything it'll pick up the color of what it's near. Um, I have a pink, but my pink is a totally different pink than this. So if this was on your machine, you would be, uh, I think you'd be unhappy, unless you really love this color. But if it was on this machine, I don't think that would go. So I'm really torn between these three. I think I'm going to go with this one. because it just kind of disappears, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I don't know. Let me know what you would do in the comments below. Which color would you do? Beige, white, or translucent? White could be the answer for this machine. I think I'm leaning towards white now. Now whenever you put these on your machine, you may have to adjust the height of that bobbin winder. Let's see. Oh no, this one's good. This one's got a spring. Oh yeah. So, yeah, that's perfect. I'll just tighten that, loosen that. This machine is ready to go. So what did we learn today? Number one, always check all the cables on a vintage machine before you plug it in. That cable that plugs into the wall on this machine looked great. And the cable going to the light looked great. The cable going to the pedal looked great. But the one going to the motor 
was falling apart and it could have it could have done something really bad uh, whether it be fire shocking somebody um, or just popping a breaker it could have done something bad we're lucky that it didn't number two the foot controls on these vintage machines are made up of resistive elements and they're not springs so even though they look like springs they're not and then number three perhaps the most important in my book is that my Etsy store is the only place you'll find any of the bobbin tires you saw today. So all those different colors, I'm the only one that sells these. Uh, I got them specially made. I haven't found them anywhere on the internet. Um, so I got them made and I sell them on my Etsy store and you're welcome to buy them and uh, check out that store. Here's the link right here. This is really the first Atlas sewing machine that I've worked on and I really love the engineering in here. The fact that they use a little spring for the the bobbin winder tire and um, some of the other features on this machine and the fact that it has withstood the ages here and is before us today and uh, looking as good as it does. So these machines, um, if you find one, I think that they're a pretty good machine and I like the stitch that it makes as well. It's a pretty good stitch. Uh, this does not have zigzag, it's just a straight stitch machine, but sometimes that's really all you need. So thanks for watching.